Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Kelvin here. So today we have another special guest. Her name is Geraldine. She talks a lot about challenges and aspirations of our generation uh, and about personal growth and stuff. Lah. So welcome to the channel. Hey, thanks for having me, Kelvin. Actually, how do I pronounce your full name? <laughs> yeah, this is a question that I get the most often, like even when I was in primary school, right? Huh. So um, when I was in school and all that, teachers always ask when they read the registration list. So the simple way to remember this is like, Pia. Pia. Correct, you know like, Po Pia. That's the same I way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic, yeah. So that's how you pronounce my, my last name. <laughs> okay, now you guys know. So you were studying journalism in the past. Then I saw that you, not too long ago, changed to working in the software as a service company. La. So how, how do you actually make that change? Because it feels like the whole thing is unrelated to what you are studying in the past. Yep, correct. That's a, also another question that I get pretty often. So, you know, when, when I was in school, um, you know, I studied journalism and I also studied public policy. And I had this uh, dream and vision uh, to make an impact on, on our society. And I thought that, you know, journalism or maybe going to the public service would be the best way that I can actually contribute um, to, to Singapore. However, when I graduated, um, you know, I realized that um, there's two things. If I were to pursue the journalism path, there's only two options for me. And on top of that, because we don't really have that much press freedom, so it wasn't very, uh, <laughs> it wasn't very attractive as right. an option. Uh, and if I were to go to public service, um, I guess because I didn't do super well like in, in school and I'm not a scholar, okay. so uh, I realised that my promotion, right, my promotion pathway is going to be impacted as a result of okay. that yeah, and limited. So um, looking at the rest of the, the, these two options, they are no longer viable, so I went to do um, software sales instead. But when you mention like journalism is not a viable, when I see uh, like Channel News Asia, right? Mm. They are doing a lot of like investigative journalism yep. that doesn't have to do with politics. So in a way, it's actually viable. It's just probably you feel that the interest is not there. Yeah, probably. Uh, and, and also when, I was, when I'm thinking about career choices, there are also a lot more other factors that I look at. Impact is of course yeah. critical right, and important to me. But I also think about how can I get the most ROI from the time I spend. Ah. Yeah, so that was another factor that I was looking at also. So the reason why software as a service is so attractive to me mm. and doing stats sales is because, um, first of all, there's a high, high, high ROI for the time that you, you mm. spend. Um, second of all, you get a lot of flexibility and freedom, which is something that I enjoy also. I like to have a lot of autonomy. And you're also assessed based on the outcomes that you bring right. to, to the organisation. So it's not, you know, not based on age, not based on how long you work for the comp company and all that but really based on the results, the actual results that you can deliver. Okay. Which is something that is very critical to me, right? Because I believe that people should be um, perceived that way uh, rather right. than, you know, how long you spend in the office. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense uh, to move into something that's like more like commission-based. Yeah, correct. So that your ROI is higher. Uh. Mm. The other thing is about you is that you are very driven. You write a blog. Then you talk about personal growth, career advancement and stuff like that. Uh. So where did that whole interest come from? Is that like a personal trauma that's happening? <laughs> <laughs> so when I was young, right, um, I, it's just very natural. Like I always go to the library since I was young. So I love to read. I read a lot. Um, and every week I'll be reading and all that. Um, and I think just um, when I was young, I read like a lot of like um, non-fiction books. Mm -hmm. And then when I approached my teens, right, I gradually started to read self-help books already wow. because I just wanted to be better. So it, it comes from from inside. Like. I don't okay. think it's actually from any kind of like um, trauma or anything. But if you think if you're asking me in terms of um, push push factors, right. not just pull, right? I guess it's because for me, I'm you know as a person, I don't want to be the other way through. You get what I mean? Okay, okay. And the only way to do that is actually to be someone of a certain um, status. Right, right, right. Correct. So you don't have to be you know humiliated or like bullied by mm. by others also. So I thought that that was a uh, also a driving force for me to to want to continue to excel. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. My my YouTube channel started because of a uh, personal trauma. Oh. Not that bad lah. So when I start when I want to share stuff to people like. They were not interested to listen. They're like, why? You are trying to sell me stuff, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but they're like, no, I'm trying to help. Then they're like, okay, they don't want to listen. So that's why I started this whole YouTube channel. Uh, because I felt ignored. <laughs> so it's kind of like you wanted to talk about money and yes. like all that, but nobody wants to talk to you about Nobody wants to talk about that. Like, I finished work already, no, don't want to talk about money. Yeah. Okay, actually, maybe in, in that sense, similar to you. Because uh, for those who have been following me for some time, I actually started writing about current affairs, social yes. issues and all those. And back then, it was a bit taboo to... To talk about these kind of serious? topics, yeah, before you know the recent changes and everything, so nobody wanted to discuss it with me, and my peers are not very interested uh, in it. Maybe they're more interested in other things, like uh. yeah. So that's why I started to write online. <laughs> yeah. Quick pause. Here are four reasons to sign up to Mumu Singapore. One, 
you can easily keep track of company's news and announcements within the app. 2. Mumu lets you easily analyze the company from both the technicals and fundamentals to help you make better decisions when investing in the company. 3. They have an active community where you can discuss stocks and investments with one another. And last but not least, they have further upgraded their latest promotion. For the first reward, when you deposit $100, you will get a $2 cashback daily for 10 days. Then, for the second reward, deposit 2 k and perform 2 buy trades to get a free Coca-Cola stock worth around $80. And the ultimate reward, deposit $10,000 and perform 7 buy trades to get a $108 cash coupon. So, if you want to earn these rewards, you can sign up to Mumu Singapore using my link down below. With that being said, Let's get back to the video. Moving on to recent affairs. La. So recently, there's the whole graduate employment survey showing the starting pay of uh, fresh grads. Mm -hmm. So do you think that like the starting pay of fresh grads, is it really that important? Mm. Or should we focus on other things? There's a level of importance to it, right? Oh, because okay. um, where you start, um, you know, it's the benchmark which is used to get the increments moving from there. So if you start much lower, then you know, you're kind of like behind your peers. Mm. And I do understand why fresh graduates tend to place a lot of emphasis on starting salary because of the high cost of living in Singapore, the cost of BTO and you know weddings and everything and other aspirations that they might have uh, like to travel and all that. But those aspirations are self-inflicted when it's sort of... It right. could be self-inflicted but there's also some which um, uh, are inflicted upon them by their parents right? <laughs> <laughs> as soon as possible and all that. So aspirations you know and all that um, which I believe that we should you know, continue to support young, young people with these aspirations. Uh. But the thing is that, you know, I don't think it should be the main determinant okay. when you choose a job. There's a lot of more important things. For example, the network that you get access to. Mm. So if you join a good company with very, very uh, driven and hungry people, right, you get access to that kind of network. You know, you learn from them how they think. And then when they go on to join other companies, you have now new friends in different, different companies out there. So that actually paves a very good way for your career. Uh, other factors to look at also is the training and okay. the level of like investment that the employer wants to, to invest in you, right? To guide you and to train you and all that. So this is this these are things which are very, very useful. The exposure that you get, the network that you get, which should not come as a secondary to starting salary also. So it's better to evaluate the opportunity that you have on hand as a whole rather than just like salary. Right. Because right, when I first uh, graduated, yeah. I sort of worked in a startup. So mm. basically there's no network. <laughs> they are hungry people la, but it's more like desperate more than hungry mm. because they don't want the startup to fail. Mm. So I, I, I don't know, um, I guess in the end it turned out well but it sort of, the whole thing sort of impacted my growth uh, in terms of salary, mm. in terms of my uh, career advancement and mm -hmm. stuff. La. So even when I worked for like seven, eight years, right, my pay was very similar to a fresh grad's pay. Okay, okay. That, for that year. La. So would you say like working in a corporate job versus startup would corporate job be better in, in that case? Well, we look at these two options, right? Corporate mm. job, like corporate, I assume MNC, yeah, like yes. big company established already and all that, and startup. Mm. There's a couple of ways to look around it. When you join a, as a fresh graduate, um, if I could do it again, I would join a corporate at the beginning to get the network, the training, everything. Then I'll move to a startup ah. to learn and okay. to accelerate my career. And when it comes to training startup, especially during these macroeconomic conditions, there's quite a lot of things to look at. It's not like every startup is going to be high growth. Every startup is going to be good. They, that's what they will tell you in the interview. But <laughs> they go, you're going to become very rich when we IPO and everything. That's the story that they will tell. Everybody says the same thing. Rocket ship uh, yes. and all that. But the thing is that about startups is that you have to really evaluate. Okay, first of all, what stage? I would say seed stage might be a bit risky if you're someone who loves stability and all that. So mm. typically, I look at companies which are Series A and above. Okay. Because that's when they already achieve product market fit. Another thing I look at uh, it's also the founders, mm. right? And also the mode of the company. Mm. Like how, you know, are they really doing something disruptive, you know? It's like, is that legit? And also look at the investors who invest in them, wow. like who are the investors. So okay. this, are how, this is how we assess an opportunity. Uh, yeah. But I think fresh grads won't really look at that stuff, right? They just look at the pay and just, I want the job, then that's the job, that's the, they just take that's it. That's why we're doing this interview. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of uh, starting pay, so for art, art graduates, yeah. their starting pay is like consistently the lowest for the past 10 years. Mm. But the re whole reason they wanted that is uh, they are very passionate in the whole art subject thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to be uh, editor, artist or mm. whatever. So um, how do you even get paid well in that kind of creative industry? Uh? Join government, no? 
<laughs> okay, yeah, that's one option, right? If you join government as an arts graduate, yeah, you tend to have a starting higher starting salary. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's that's one option. Um, when I when, when you say arts, I think you mean humanities also, right? Like mm-hmm. sociology, psychology, yes. and all that. And I can totally identify because I was an arts graduate, communication and journalism is a <laughs> considered as public policy is considered arts and social science also. Mm. So um, for me, I think that it's very important as someone in this field to really ask yourself, uh, what's the role passion play in my life, right? Passion can evolve over time. Will I still be interested in this same thing when I get more exposure to other things? Okay. So that's the first question to ask yourself. Second question to ask yourself is really that, you know, do I need to fulfill my passion at work? Or can it be from outside sources? Mm. So like for me, uh, I wouldn't say software as a service is my first love, right? You know, correct? But I do enjoy, I do grow to like this field very, very much. Okay. And at the same time, I pursue my original passion, which is like volunteering, writing, mm. you know, the more creative uh, fun stuff like outside of working hours. But don't those don't pay well, right? <laughs> the arts pay well. Uh. You are an example of someone who pursue like something creative and it, it does. Mine, mine is just the uh, outliers. Uh. <laughs> Things can change like like the five year before me, before yeah. now, I'm more interested in games. Now I'm more interested in finance. Mm. Uh, so it doesn't have to always be fixed the whole route throughout the way. Uh. Yeah, correct. Probably the art thing is good for now as a starting point yeah. uh, to get a degree or whatever yeah. then you just move on from there <laughs> yeah. you don't have to you don't have to work your your, uh, your job doesn't have, doesn't have to be like your childhood passion or something okay. yeah. <laughs> what if we find ourselves in a job that we don't like um, like for example we don't like the job scope maybe the interviewer didn't tell us about it and we only found out after we start the job mm-hmm. uh, maybe we don't like the colleagues mm. maybe my boss is an idiot what's my next Thing to do should I like leave the job or just like change my mindset there's no no perfect job right okay. you go everywhere it's just a different set of problems okay. that you are going to face so for me what I encourage people to do when they're upset about their job is to really you know before before you even start your, your work you tell yourself what's the top three reason why you're here right mm. the top three anchor it could be something it could be your direct boss you like him very much it could be your colleague you know that you like very much or it could be the learning opportunities that you get so you need to constantly reassess right I mean I do this every quarter and every wow. six months yeah is this job still fulfilling my top three reasons? Or has my top three reasons actually evolved over time? Okay. Because if you don't have something to anchor yourself, you always find things to don't like. Oh, the pantry <laughs> not enough Milo. Right, not enough biscuit. Or like some other stupid things that you, you don't <laughs> like, right? And then there's no such thing as a perfect company. So you need to know your why. It needs to be very, very strong. Mm. And let's say, for example, you come to a situation where you're like, what, this company, they, they remove your boss that you like, you know, then the, the, some structure changes that really cause you a lot of pain. Mm. And then you re- reevaluate your three reasons and this three reasons has either shifted or it's no longer there. Mm. Then um, I think it's time to, to really look outside. But don't imp- be impulsive and quit your job, especially in this current <laughs> condition, right? Especially if you work in tech. Yeah. I think it would be good to really, first of all, take stock, see whether you have adequate emergency funds. Right. So I recommend about, I mean, I'm a bit more conservative. So 12 to 18. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm very conservative, yeah. 12 to 18 months. And at the same time, um, you know, start to network, yeah, start to get to know more people and all those and reach out to them so that you can actually, you know, have people to help you, right, during this journey of looking for a new role. Uh, but what, what's your view on job hopping? Like, let's say I like this company a lot. Mm. Uh, should I change jobs every one, two years just to get that increment instead? There is no right or wrong answer. So leaving a job within a short frame of time, is, mm. that, is that what you say? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it depends on how often you do it. Because every some, one year. Yeah, if every year you do it, yeah. and people do a resume, they will feel like it's a red flag, right? <laughs> right? Like you have no strong why, okay. right? But um, I guess that there are times where you have to make that judgment call to do it. Okay. For example, in the past two years, salaries in tech have gone up like a lot. Yes. If you don't change, you cannot tap on these new um, right, right, right. opportunities, right? That uh, that have been given. Mm. So. So it, it, you have to weigh it out and make sure that you, if you want to do short stints, you have also have long stints to kind of like back you up. Uh. Yeah, for example, I left my previous job in 10 months only. <laughs> yeah, correct. My why job why do you leave your job? Pool factors. Money. Pool factors. Yeah. yeah, correct. <laughs> okay. yeah. And also like learning opportunities. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Um, but because I wasn't afraid to make that jump. Okay, I guess I was afraid to make that jump, but eventually I convinced myself not to be afraid. Because if I look at my previous tenure, a lot of my roles is about three years, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. For, for me, I left my job all because all the startups fail. Okay. <laughs> so don't be afraid to leave the job. Mm. Uh, because if you stay there, even the company can just kick you out anytime. The company can just collapse. So I think 
always put yourself as the priority rather than the company as the priority. Then with all the tech layoffs that you mentioned just now, is it actually a wise, uh, wise idea to go into the tech industry right now? Mm. Yeah, again, I, I do get this question sometimes. Like, hey, tech, is it failing? Is it no longer going to be an in thing and all that? I think that, you know, if we look at the current uh, situation, the past mm. two, two years, three years, or maybe even decade, especially, was actually doing, you know, capital was cheap. Mm. So it's very easy to, you know, companies just overhire. They will hire for underqualified people for roles. They will hire for roles that are not even needed in the organization and everything. So that was the past, mm. right? And now they are just starting to cut out all this and really, really focus on, hey, how can we grow fast? but at the same time grow in a sustainable way and reach a pathway to profitability. Mm. Hence, all the tech layoffs and everything is, is happening right now. So, as to whether you want to go into tech, you need to, you, you cannot join it for the wrong reasons. If you join tech thinking it could be easy money, right? Or like, oh, uh, very relaxed life and everything, you know, you're not going to get it. And I think you better join another industry that is <laughs> not so shiong. Because okay. the reality of tech industry, um, you know, is that it's a winner takes it all, right? High growth right, cutthroat, um, you know, moving very fast and everything. So if you cannot adapt to that kind of like speed, velocity, where you constantly need to innovate, right, and move very fast and to drive results, then you really need to question like, hey, is this the correct place for you to be in? All my, uh, who were studying in the computing school with yeah. me, right, almost all of them went out of that field already. Okay. They have moved on to other stuff. Right? Um, so I think it's like what you say, it's very cutthroat. Even in that 10 years, I have to keep we innovating myself every one or mm. two years. Otherwise, I'll be jobless really. Mm. <laughs> so, but the money is good. Like, it's really that good if you are in the correct company, mm. in the correct industry. Like. like for me, it was, mine is in games and games were like, uh, sort, of, sort of dying. It's, it's not a, a necessary thing. Unlike big companies like uh, Google, Microsoft, that kind, those pay very well. But if you go to, for the smaller companies, those are like, meh, they kind of pay. Like. Mm. Finding a job is super tough. Like. I know that a lot of people try to email people, then they email like 50, 10, 100 resumes out, but no one ever replies. So do you have like any tips to improve the chances of success? Yep, correct. Especially in this competitive job market, right? Where you go on LinkedIn, you look at the number of people who apply, wow, it can be like 80, 500, you know? Yes. <laughs> it's quite crazy because there are a lot of talent being let go and it's mm. very competitive as a market. So rather than applying, you know, sending a resume to different like uh, job, uh, job postings and everything, I encourage you to actually go directly to the hiring manager. So it's very easy to find who is the hiring manager, right? For example, let's say I'm applying for a head of, you know, for, for a marketing role, marketing mm, manager mm. role. Then I just need to find the head of marketing and then I email that person, correct? Yeah. And the way you email has to be thoughtful also. So you need to like, you have to keep it short because they receive like, a lot of emails like every day. So maybe about like, you know, hey, I'm so-and-so, you know, I saw you hiring for this. Uh, there's a lot of value I can bring because ABC, shall we set out a time to chat? Okay. Yeah. You can use chat GPT for that. GPT <laughs> <laughs> don't understand your background. <laughs> hey, have you tried to search yourself on chat GPT? Right? Like, who is Kelvin Learns Investing? Uh, my friend did. I think, I think it did appear. <laughs> <laughs> but if you are, if everyone is doing that, then there's really no age, right? No, a lot of people are doing that. Serious? Yeah. Maybe after this, everyone is doing this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing is you can look for recruiters. Recruiters are very incentivized to help you get a job and also help you to get the highest possible pay because it impacts their commission. Right. Yeah, so recruiters, external recruiters can be one. So I worked with an external recruiter to get this, this role also. Oh, yeah. can you really approach a recruiter? No, they have because, to approach you. Right, right. So, so in my case, all the recruiters approach me. Yeah, so you add them first uh, to get noticed. Oh, yeah. then all of them are like, trying to get me into some insurance company. <laughs> Uh, but some did help me find my job. Right? So I think probably half of my job work came from recruiters. Right? Yep, correct. Yeah. Instead of companies themselves. Correct. So look for uh, at recruiters. Recruiters could be another avenue also. And the third part is network. Network is really everything. Uh, your uh, friend right. working somewhere or that. You just you don't go through the... I mean, um, you know, for example, if you enter, enter a club, if you queue up outside, that's the longest way. Right. Yeah, you might not even get in. But if you know people inside, you know, if you have networks, if you are thinking of creative ways to enter, that could be a better option. Yeah. Mm, makes sense, makes sense. Do you have like, any tips to improve the resume? At least for tech industry, a lot of people look at LinkedIn rather than resume. That's why I'm oh. posting a lot on LinkedIn. Right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, LinkedIn profile has to be done, done well, everything, proper picture and everything. But resume, keep it to one page and then focus a lot more on achievements rather than the actual job scope. But if I'm a fresh grad, there's nothing to write. There's things, to, there's things you've done, right? like clubs <laughs> that you are part of, internships. Now this internship is like a compulsory thing for for fresh grads, right? Like, what do you achieve during your internship? Okay, okay, okay. 
But if I'm a lazy guy. <laughs> okay, then you cannot help me. <laughs> if I'm in my 20s and I've just graduated, it's the first time that I'm free. No one is telling me what to do. Like, no teachers telling me what to do. Uh, my mother is not chasing me to do homework. So um, I don't really know what I want for my career and life. So what can I do next? Mm, correct. So I think the whole life, you know, especially if you grew up in Singapore, it's very structured, right? Primary yes. school, PSLE, they're O levels, then then JC or Poly, mm. then um university and everything. So it's a very structured kind of pathway and you know what's the next step. But when it comes to like, you know, being an adult and being thrown into this working world, you have to really create your own path. Yes. And I think um, you know, when people ask me, right, like, how do I know which is the correct pathway for myself that I should be creating? It really begins with first understanding who you are. Right, that's the first step. Because if you don't even know who you are, what, what is your strengths, what's your weaknesses, likes and don't like, then how can you even like find the correct path for you? Because mm. your path has to be congruent with you as a person. Right. right. So I think it begins with that. And to self-discover yourself, there can be a couple of ways. I think personality test is a good way. There are good personality tests out there like strengths finder and all that for you to okay. discover like your competitive advantage. And then of course exposure. So exposure to different things, different courses, different internship experiences different working experiences or exposure to different people. So if you get yourself exposed in the areas that you're interested in, then you can determine, is that something you really want to do or not? So should I like, just try out jobs or just for fun to find out? Maybe you can shortlist like, you know, top three kind of options for yourself, right? Right. Like, and then like, for me it was public policy, journalism, and then the third one was um, sales, uh, mm. business development. Okay. Right. And then you can try them out. So do internships and all that. And then from there you get exposure to it. Like I did a couple of government internships. Ah. Like I interned at, um, I don't think I can say the name. <laughs> yeah. some, some companies. Uh. So some ministries, yeah. Okay. And I also um, learned marketing on the side, right? I read about digital marketing, learned about SEO and all that. And then um, it was only through these experiences that I realised that, hey, maybe this is not the correct pathway for, for me. So you need to get exposed. And when you do it, then you can learn. Can you do internships when after you graduate? I do. I believe that some companies do offer graduate internship goals. Uh, but it's better to do it when you are in school. Uh, so you, you know. Cheap labour. <laughs> <laughs> wow, there are a lot of very motivated people like you mm-hmm. um, who are trying to climb up the career ladder, get the most out of life. Then on the other hand, there are people who are less motivated. Uh, they are just try to do the bare minimum, minimum uh, quiet quitting, and just come home, watch TV, complain about the government. <laughs> So do you think like, is there any right or wrong way to live your life? Uh? Well, I, think, I don't think there is a right or wrong way <coughs> to live your life. For me, I've chosen this path. Right. Or, or as a person, I want to be driven because I only have one life, right? And I, I want to make the most out of it. I want to reach my fullest potential. And I'm happiest when I feel that I'm maximizing my potential. That's the path I've chosen. Okay. Right? And at the same time, there are also other people who, who just want to be simple, right? Okay. And... And if that's the path you choose for yourself and you are willing to accept that standard of living that comes with it and everything, then why not? Uh, if you are happy, the ultimate the, the main thing is that you must be happy and must be able to support the people around you. Okay, a while ago work salary man made some comic about this. So he said like if you are planning to quiet quit, you're basically on this small boat, but a wave that comes, right? You just have to follow the wave and you can't do anything about it. Yeah. So if you really want to take charge of your life in a way, then you have to build a bigger boat uh, yeah. in, that, in that sense. So your life, I think it depends on what you want in life. Though. Then you have to accept whatever that comes along the way. <laughs> Correct. Like if you choose the driven path, you have to accept the stress. Right? Okay. You have to accept like, you need to innovate very fast. Like you every time learning new things, right? And Force driving two. yourself, right? Force to. I also have to learn new things all the time. And I believe it will be this way for the rest of my life. Uh. Mm. So that's, the, that's the, the path I've chosen and the consequences that I'm willing to live with. So the question I ask yourself is really, if I choose whichever path, can I live with the consequences? So right now you're on this whole career, career thing. Uh, do you see an end point to this whole thing? Uh? End point? Like, are you planning to do this thing until 60 years old? Are, are you planning to pee with as something comes along? Uh, so you're asking me about my career goals? Yes. Alright, okay. So basically, um, you know, when I was, I think it's about five years ago or so, my career goal, you know, when my boss right, would ask me to, you know, what, what do I plan to do uh. in the next 10 years? Yeah, I just tell you, financial independence, <laughs> retire early. Okay, okay. That was my vision. I just want to retire. I just okay. don't want to, you know, be in the kind of situation whereby, you know, I'm under a lot of control and everything. But after a while, I realized that chasing this whole fire thing has its, um, has its limitations, right? Oh, okay. Because if you keep focusing on the end goal, then you sacrifice like a lot, right? Like uh, during the process, you're not enjoying the rest of your life also. You're not living in an optimal way. So, so what okay. happened in the end if you reach retirement? Like if I look at my dad, 
uh, right now, he started to tell me like, oh, retirement is a little bit boring. <laughs> yeah. So, I realised that it's not all as rosy as it is meant okay. to, to be. So, that's why I feel, I, I begin to change. I realised that, hey, I want to make the most out of my um, career. You know, uh, I want to like, you know, do well in it and all that. And even if I reach a stage where I'm financially independent and I like, can just like, quit any time, I still want to do things that I enjoy. Uh. And for uh. me, there's no end point that I see yet because so far, I really like the SaaS um, sector. I, how near are you to financial independence? Uh? How do you define financial independence? You have a number, right? How close are you to that number? Oh, uh, pretty close. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that job's pay <paid> well. <laughs> okay. The, I realise that for me, I'm 36 now. So the older you get, <laughs> the, the older you get, the less friends you have, especially if you are an introverted guy. Lah. So how do you actually make friends as an intro, introverted guy? I'm asking this for myself. Lah. So you, you got a lot of friends, right? I don't have. 80 plus <laughs> people like, watching Those you every fans, day. Those are friends, friends. Yes. So like, because sometimes, <laughs> not only for me, like, when I talk to people, right? I will have those intrusive thoughts like you do they think I'm weird, do they think uh, I'm ugly, that kind of feeling. Mm. So how do you actually make friends when you are older? Okay. So this, I think there's two parts to your question, right? One is about age, because as we grow older, like we have lesser friends. Yes. The second part is about self confidence. Like, <laughs> who people even want to be friends with with yes. you. So let's talk about the first one first. Mm. So when it comes to making friends uh, as a adult, I guess, <laughs> o- older adult, um, I think it's very important to put yourself out there, mm. right? Like for me, my friend group changes like every two years Whoa. because of the new things that I'm getting involved in, okay. new projects, right? And then new um, activities that I'm being part of. So just go and do the things that you like, um, you know, like attend courses or, or, you know, and all that. And then you from there, you'll be able to meet like, like-minded people. Mm. Like when I enter the financial content creation space. I meet so many new friends who are part of that, that ecosystem. And then now at my job, like, I have to focus a lot on like, working with startups, digital natives, right? Mm. So that's when I really got to know a lot of people in that space also who are also interested in the same thing. So that's how I expand my social circle by constantly, you know, identifying things I want to explore more interested in and then putting myself in that kind of like um, okay, okay. environment. So that's the first part. So in that way, right, it feels like friends have a purpose. Okay, so when I think of Friends, right? It's more like, okay, I can tell you secrets, that kind of friend. Yeah, so yeah. When, when the friends that you are mentioning, it feels more like a tool to achieve something, that kind of friend. Is that co- really considered a friend or more like an associate or colleague kind of you? Oh, right. Okay, I get what you mean. So your, your, your question is basically, if I make friends, right. in, let's say for example, the startup scene which I'm you know, working as part of, right? Yeah, yeah. Are they more like allies or allies, are they yes. more like... Um, Actual friends. Yeah, yeah. So I think it depends on who. So when I look for people, right, I will look for people who are those who uh, are going to play long term games with me. Okay. So if I see someone is transactional, mm. like you yeah, are just being friends with me just for the benefits that I bring, mm. then I will not want to engage with this person. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 I will still be courteous and polite, right, because that's the correct thing to do and how I'm brought up. Okay. But it doesn't mean that I want to spend time, you know, beyond that. But for mm. those that I find very sincere, who are very willing to help mm. and who are very willing to share and all that with me uh, and who actually contribute back to the community and believe in things that are bigger than themselves beyond just uh, money and like okay. you know success right then I want to be closer to them and mm. then slowly build that friendship and then eventually it could reach a point whereby I start to share more secrets with <laughs> so it's like a you know it's a you have to see about and identify the right kind of people okay 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 then what about the um, self-confident that part yeah then when it, actually I also struggle with it oh. yeah when I first graduated I would think that like Hey, why why we people don't want to talk to me, right? I'm uh. just a fresh grad sometimes and, and all that and like especially I work in a male dominated environment. Yes. Right. And I would think that people will, will not think that I'm competent and and I have some kind of this self doubts. Uh. I wouldn't say it's very strong, but I do have this type of like self doubts also. Mm. But I think that confidence comes from first earning your stripes. Mm. You know, as you start to achieve more and more, you need to take stock of these achievements and remind yourself, right? Like, hey, definitely people want to talk to you. Definitely people want to talk to you. Come uh. on, you are Calvin Learns Investing. Eh. So, like, when people want to talk to me, right, sometimes I, I'm also, like, doubting a lot. Like, how come last time nobody want to talk to me? Then now everyone want to talk to me. Is it because I've, I can be used in that way? Yeah. So, nowadays when I make friends, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> is it a really genuine thing or is it a transactional thing? So, no, so, I, I, I completely yeah. agree with you. <coughs> I completely agree with you because I'm content creator myself. Yes. Sometimes it's, you start to see like schoolmates from last time suddenly want to be close to you, <laughs> want to talk to you, want to meet up and all that. Yes, so, they kind of feel. Yeah, like. they kind of feel, right? Yeah. Like suddenly like, you know, all along you don't care about me and then when I start to do well and all that, then you start to like, you know, um, be chummy and everything. So that's very normal. <laughs> it comes with part of the role of being a content creator. 
But I think it's very important to really um, trust your gut sometimes. Mm. And then secondly, look at that person's actions, right? When they talk to you, what is it about? Like, do they, do they offer to help you? Do they try and share knowledge and all that? Uh-huh. Or are they just taking, right? That, that one is something you can only see through, through time. Common advice is that when you are young, uh, you have to work hard, save and invest your money so that you can compound your money. La. The whole magic of compounding, whatever. Then, on, uh, recently I've also started to see ideas where when you are young, you have to live life as much as you can. Don't worry about money so much because mm-hmm. later on you will earn more in life in your 30s, 40s, especially in the tech industry. So, which is the optimal, optimal path to go? Like, should you save hard, work hard, or should you like live carefree in your 20s then only start to worry about all the rest later on. Yeah, when you frame this question, right, work hard and everything, save money, it's high fun. Yes. Versus like YOLO, right? Yes. You see, it seems that you are approaching it from a binary perspective, but there mm. could be a middle ground, right? Like, so ultimately, you need to ask yourself, what do I want to achieve in the next few years? How much money I need? Okay. And then from there, work backwards to see like, what's the level of YOLO-ness or <laughs> uh, hardworkingness that you need to go to? So right. I think I, sh- I fluctuated between someone who is um, initially more like, you know, cra- chasing after fire, like super crazy about it, right? Mm. And then, to, and gradually I start to like, let go, you know, be more spontaneous and all because that. Because you got more money now. Uh, partly, partly. <laughs> and also because I, I do recognise that, I don't like the way I live. Uh. It's okay. like, it's so stressful, right? And then I didn't like it. And what, what if I die tomorrow? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it, it's very, very possible, right? Like, okay. you know, and um, at the same time, what about the people around me who I, I love and care about? Mm-hmm. Like, th- should I not splurge on them? Should I not contribute to them? Okay. You know, what about bigger goals like you know, uh, donating charity? I should be doing that. So now you are speaking from the position where you are more privileged. Privileged. privileged right? But if you are back to the fresh, fresh grad situation, how would you plan your path then? It depends on what you want in life. If you need right. to like, you know, if you have a kid, for example, <laughs> right? Then you cannot live low, right? You have to balance that out with the responsibilities they have. If you have a pa- parent who is unwell, which mm. is very unfortunate, um, then you have to balance these priorities accordingly. Also. So it's really, it's an individual thing, mm. depend- depending on the circumstances that you, you have and you are facing also, or your goals, right? So I think we have come to the end of this interview. Thank you, Geraldine, for sharing your knowledge and wisdom to us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you have not followed her yet, you can check her out on LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, and her mailing list. Lah. Mm. I'll put all the links down below for you to check out. So anyway, that's all for this video. Bye! Bye-bye!